When you talk about championship midfielders at this level, there, there is not many better. I don't think they've got the bottle for it. I'll be very blunt with that. They've shown that they haven't so far. They did the same thing last season. But there's a lot to be desired with this Sheffield United side at the moment. There are so many spinning plates that it's incredibly hard to say. If a takeover happens, if they don't have to sell players, if they can bring one or two in, I do think they've got a very good chance. Does he have all the players there that mm. suit his style of play? That's the thing. I think he could be a decisive factor in Tartar Race because he's that little bit of zest and creativity that every team in a championship needs. Six goals each this season. What have uh, Grant and Robinson got, mate? Oh, I'm not going to throw stats like that out. I don't need to, but it's all about the assist. It's all about the, the laying it on a plate for each other. It's all about being friends, Ryan. Oh, baby, it's time for the stopwatch. Welcome back to the topical championship show with a little twist. It's five topics, a two minute timer and two hosts. We're Ryan and Justin from the Second Tier Podcast. And let's get right into it. Justin, after Pirro and Patterson inspired yet another impressive win for Swansea. I have the question, who is the deadliest duo in the championship for you Oh, it's a great question. I think the ones that come to my mind first are Carl and Grant and Callum Robinson. Um, I think Carl and Grant's goal record has been superb, and Callum Robinson in supply of Carl and Grant has been fantastic. He's assisted Carl and Grant four times this season, which just puts him up there as as one of the deadliest two in the championship. To be to be blunt, I can see where you're coming from. Both are very good players in their own right, aren't they? Both have fantastic records at championship level, and it's hard to argue that. Two players who really stand out for me, though, are Luton's striking duo of Harry Cornick and Elijah Adebayo. The only two strikers in the championship to play for the same club and have six goals this season. No other championship strikers as a pair have more than those two this season. So I would like those two. I, I think they both complement each other very well. Cornick's got the pace. He stretches defences by Adebayo, bullies defenders and leaves a mark on them. What do you think? I think they, they are deadly in their own right, but are they a deadly duo together? Will Cornick put it put one on the plate for Adebayo? I don't know. Callum Robinson, however, would. Colin Grant, in his own right, will do the same thing for Callum Robinson. There's a there's a good partnership going there, and I don't think there's quite that partnership with Adebayo and Harry Cornick. Six goals each this season. What have uh, Grant and Robinson got, mate? Oh, I'm not going to throw stats like that out. I don't need to, but it's all about the assist. It's all about the, the laying it on a plate for each other. It's all about being friends, Ryan. I'm sure they are probably friends. I'm sure they're great friends in their own right. But you've got West Brom who are, you know, they've got plenty of service. They've got Mauer, Townsend, Furlong. Sure, those, <laughs> those that service is usually coming in the form of long throws being launched into the box. But at the, at the same time, you've got Cornick and Adebayo who don't have that luxury of quality behind them and are doing a fantastic job. So I would go for those two. I admit, though, Grant and Robinson, two very good players. So, Justin, can you give me another question, please? Just how big of a, of a boost is Tom Kearney returning for Fulham? Will it be a decisive factor in the title race? Massive boost. When you talk about championship midfielders at this level, there, there is not many better than Tom Kearney. Sure, he may have struggled at Premier League level, but in the championship, his record is phenomenal. And he's done it time and time again. He has been pretty key to every single time Fulham have got promoted. And he could be key once again this season. Will it be decisive in the title race? I think there are players who Fulham will be looking towards more to help them win the title this season. Uh, but there's no doubt that Tom Kearney will be a very important player. If we can see a, a fit Tom Kearney sort of around January time when, he, when he's back to 100% fitness, I think he could be a decisive factor in Tartar Race because he's that little bit of zest and creativity that every team in a championship needs. God knows West Brom need one like that right now. And and he's the player for me. And like you said, he's got previous. He he, he carried Fulham to, to promotion under Ikanovic and he did the same thing pretty much under Scott Parker as well. He's a pivotal player for Fulham. And I think, as I say, he can be a pivotal, sorry, a deciding factor in the title race, definitely. Yeah, he walks into just about every championship team, doesn't he? I don't think there's much doubt in that, to be quite honest. Um, it, it's interesting because Fulham have so many midfield options, don't they? And if Tom Kearney, um, if he does get back fully fit, it'll be interesting to see how often he plays. But I would, I would expect him to be starting pretty much every game, would you? 
I think I would. Um, obviously, they've got a lot of options in that in that midfield, haven't they? But Tom Kearney, when he when he's back to full fitness, he has to be the first name on the starting on the, in the starting eleven. He's a he's a top top player and a wonderful effort as we saw this week with his goal. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Justin, after West Brom suffered a second loss in three outings, could the pressure mount on Valerian Ishmael? And does he need to change his style of play to appease the fans? Yes, it's a, it's a good question. I think the pressure is on Ishmael to get results, not necessarily on the style of play, but to appease the fans, I think the style of play could come under a bit of scrutiny. I think the style of play, I do rate it. I do like it. I do like Ishmael. But I think with West Brom, I think teams have started to work them out a little bit. And I think um, varying it slightly, being a bit more possession, having a bit more possession in that final third will create them more chances and ultimately score more goals. I'm stuck at a bit of a quandary here because I think Valerian Ishmael, his style of play was so effective with Barnsley last season. And I don't think he should change it if that's the way that he thinks is the best way to get results. However, I, I hear what you're saying and... You've got a question, does he have all the players there that mm. suit his style of play? The, thing. the big striker up front, all they've really got is Jordan Hugill, who has never really particularly convinced me. Um, so I, I don't think he should change the style of play, but he maybe should slightly alter it to, you know, include the players like Callum Robinson, who we were just talking about earlier, who is better at the ball at his feet. Those kind of players, do you know what I mean? Yeah, you make a really good point about personnel and having the right tools. For example, at Barnsley, he had Corley Woodrow, who was a false nine at times, drop into them half spaces in around the 18-yard box, allow Barnsley to to win them second balls in that area. I don't think he has that. Colin Grant's perfect for the role, but the other two slots are open for debate. I think if they find players that can come in and, and do the job or, or get the players, get more out of the players out there now, I think it'll be fine, but it's finding that balance. They've not been helped by certain players not being at top form as well. Mm -hmm. It's got to be pointed out. But at the same time, I don't think the pressure will mount on Ishmael. I think they'll continue to pick up results. And I don't think this mini drop in form will last, uh, in my personal opinion. Uh, just the next topic, please. With Derby stretching their unbeaten run to four games, is it a possibility that they could avoid relegation this season? There are so many spinning plates that it's incredibly hard to say. First of all, it's got to be pointed out, the likelihood is there'll be at least 20 points, I think, 20 points deducted for the season. Um, and that is a big, big deduction for any team. I don't care who you are. Um, and for that to be happening, I think they'd have to finish at least in the top half for them to have any chance of staying up. The big problem is... As we know with their current administration, that means there's a good chance they'll have a fire sale of players in January, Justin, and that is not ideal, is it? It isn't. I think in the, their current state right now, I don't think they can avoid relegation. So if they're in administration past January, if they get more uh, more points deducted, etc. I don't think they will. But if a, if a takeover happens, if they don't have to sell players, if they can bring one or two in... I do think they've got a very good chance of staying up because we've seen what Wayne Rooney can get out of the squad of players so far. That's very promising. But what can he get out of the squad that he can add to? That 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 is the interesting thing. And as you say, it's just a spinning plates factor. There are too many variables to, to think about. But current state, no. If things improve, yes. I, I just think even though they've been doing so well so far this season, I think the squad depth they got will really... Um, hinder them as the season goes on because we are still early in the season aren't we let's mm -hmm. be honest um, and considering they've only got one fit striker at the moment Colin Kazan Richards is coming back but they haven't really got many other options up front and then centre half you're lacking options as well it's, it's difficult to say I I, I... I, obviously, the the uh, odds are stacked firmly against Derby it's hard to see them staying up and it, a lot of it depends on how many players they lose in January at the moment, it looks like it's going to be a lot. Final topic for you, Justin, is Slavisi Kanovic underachieving at Sheffield United after three losses in the last four. Is their mini revival over? I think I'll, I'll jump on the Kanovic straight, straight away. I don't think he's underachieving. I think the players are. I think the players need to be playing and performing a lot better. They've got a lot of talent at that at that club, but they're still relying on the likes of Billy Sharp and David McGoldrick to create and score chances. It's not quite good enough. Um, is the mini revival over? 
yes, it is. Um, it looked like they were going up the table, but they're now sort of flatlined a little bit. I don't think they they can get any more out of the players that they've got. I think they need to get to January and reassess. You say the mini revival's over. You've said that without realising who they're playing this weekend. They've got Barnsley. And <laughs> I, I could only see three points go to Sheffield United, if I'm completely honest. Um, I, I The thing is with Slavisi Kanovic teams, they always start slow don't they? It's something we keep repeating, but it's it's a hardened fact at this point that Slavisia Kanovic teams always start slow. So I don't think he's underachieving. I think this was kind of expected. They're sat around mid-table now, and I think they will continue to just tick along in that mid-table area probably until the second half of the season. It's the second half of the season where a lot of expectation is being placed on Jokanovic turning this around and then being absolutely phenomenal in that second half of the season. But that's a big if, isn't it, Justin? It, it is a big if. And it's whether or not they can cope under that pressure because they've got to get points on the board. If they want to be near the playoffs, they've got to start winning games. Can they go on a 20-game unbeaten run, for example? I don't think they can. I don't think they've got the bottle for it. I'll be very blunt with that. They've shown that they haven't so far. They did the same thing last season. There's a lot to be desired with the Sheffield United side at the minute. A lot of it depends on whether they keep, you know, keep patience with Jukanovic as well, the Sheffield mm-hmm. United fans, and also, more importantly, the board. And that just about wraps it up for another episode of The Stopwatch. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. Drop us a like if you've enjoyed, and please subscribe for more content like this. We've been the Second Tier Podcast. You can find us on Twitter at Second Tier Pod. I'm Ryan Dilts. One over there is Justin Peach, 27. And thank you for watching.